Welcome back to Emotional Mojo. Well, we've got fitness on the brain, literally. Dr. Heidi Hanna is a performance coach and author of the book, The Sharp Solution. And she says the best way to have a happier, healthier body is to take the brain-based approach to fitness. And she joins us now. Welcome, Hi. Heidi. Hi. Hi. Great to be here. Nice to have you. So I want to hear what cognitive fitness really is, because that word cognitive scares people, but it just means right. brain-based, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we talk a lot about physical fitness, and most mm -hmm. people know that they need to train their body. But what happens a lot of times is that people know exactly what they should be doing, but they can't get themselves to do it. So we all wake up with these great ideas, and in the morning we're super psyched yeah, about motivation. it. Exactly. Yeah. And then by the end of the night, we don't care anymore. And a lot of that is because our brain is actually fatiguing. So the mm -hmm. idea of cognitive fitness is that we need to train ourselves in a way that we actually do the things that we want to do. Okay, now one of the things you talk about, which I think is hilarious, is the monkey brain. Yes. So <laughs> what, what is the monkey brain, and how can we actually use human parts of our brain? Okay, okay, so <laughs> this is kind of a good rule of thumb, a good way to keep this in mind, and you can all actually do this. There's a hand model of the brain. So if okay. you were to imagine your hand, the base here, the cere cerebellum and the brain stem connects to the spinal cord. Here at the L, uh, the limbic system, the amygdala there in the middle is what we call the monkey brain. So this base is what's considered the lizard brain. It's our reflex. We just okay. do things automatically. Then you have this monkey brain part in the middle that's more reactive. So it's more emotional. We're not really thinking logically here. And then over the top is this human logical processing, you know, our responses to things. That's the prefrontal? Exactly, pre exactly. So you think more cortex. human, less monkey then? Or? Well, what? so the, the challenge is when we're multitasking, <laughs> yeah, when we're, when we're multitasking or we're getting caught up in a lot of our, our emotions, we respond. There's something called the amygdala hijack where it literally mm -hmm. takes over and we can't communicate. So I'll do this yeah. sometimes. I get frustrated and I'll kind of squeeze my thumbs, yeah. reminding myself uh -huh. I'm using my monkey brain. And if I'm really <laughs> feeling bold, I'll tell my friends or family, you know, you're kind of working with your monkey brain, brain here. Right. Also, the, the brain like stem, which is the reptilian brain, is our yes. survival instinct. So can't we also be hijacked by that as well Absolutely. when we get into a state of fear? anxiety? Absolutely, absolutely. So that's that, in fact, I was running this morning and a black snake crossed my path and it was that immediate, you know, right. reaction to run away. And uh, just a few weeks ago, I was with a friend of mine, same thing happened and she said, wow, that's good luck. And it was so funny because this Her morning, yeah. I yeah. found myself wanting to run and thinking, wait, that's good luck. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's kind of brain it's training. Mind yeah. over matter. Kind of exactly. Right. All right, so you say that there's five elements to training your healthy brain. What are those five? Yeah. So these are really the core um, the, to build a, a healthy brain, a good structure, basically, because you don't want to train a brain that's falling to pieces. So nutrition, physical activity, relaxation, uh -huh. sleep, and social connections. And I'll tell you, most people are pretty good. They know what they should be doing around nutrition, right. physical activity, sleep. Mm -hmm. The one that really surprised me was um, social connection. Uh -huh. Because here I was traveling around the world and speaking in thousands of people, but I felt really isolated. And it turns out a study shows that feeling isolated is worse for your health than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. No way. Wow. The inflammation effect of our brain feeling like we're in survival mode because we don't have that support is That's amazing. And it doesn't know enormous. what's real, what's imagined, what's not. Exactly. Right? But can so, we come exactly. back to the nutrition moment? Because I know yeah. Dr. Mark Hyman teaches, yeah. he believes he can actually not cure people, but treat depression mm -hmm. through nutrition. So what's your top mm -hmm. suggestion? The, the most important thing by far is to keep glucose stable. So eating light and often throughout the day, which again That's is so simple. <laughs> my, my BFF over here, yeah, we definitely agree with that. So it's it's combining nutrients, a little bit of carbohydrate, a little bit of protein spread out over the course of the day, and then really optimizing your power foods. A Mediterranean diet is my favorite because of the healthy fats, antioxidants in your fruits and vegetables. Again, it's mostly common sense, but it's getting our brain to actually want to make those choices, which means we have to keep our energy study throughout the so day. So if I'm training my brain, how do I know it's working? The regular person, how do I know working. what I'm doing is working? You know, the, the main thing that I find for people is if you can if you can actually get yourself to relax. Okay. If cool. you can take time out and quiet your mind, you're you're actually improving the fitness of your brain because most people will mm. say, I can't do it, that's I can't easy. meditate. That's easy. We good. can do that today. We yeah. can. Yeah. Absolutely. So well, that's thank relaxation you. and meditation, right? Exactly. Thank you so exactly. much, Heidi. Her book, The Sharp, Sharp Solution, hard for me to say, <laughs> is available now.